Hey guys, it's CJ with George Astronomy, and we are going to go over the GEM 45. Uh, for those of you who remember, I was real big on the CEM 60, which was the central balanced equatorial mount. And uh, Ioptron also has GEMs. Now, the GEM, of course, being for German equatorial mount uh, rather than the counterbalance, so more of a standardized mount. You do have several different flavors that this comes in. You have the GEM45, the GEM45EC, the GEM45 Nuke, the GEM45EC with eye guider, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of different versions you can buy. In my particular case, I just bought the head only and then wound up being able to find a two inch uh, tripod from a different site. Now, depending on the package you buy, it might or might not come with the tripod or the standard 11 pound counterweight. The head on its own does come with the counterweight bar, eye polar, and the hand controller. And supposedly the new inch and three quarter light rock tripods, uh, which are used on some of the CEMs, are supposed to be sturdier and lighter than those in the past. And some packages would include the tripod and or a hard case for the mount. Now, supposedly the GM line was spawned from the designs of the CEM series. Lightweight, small footprint, high payload to mount weight ratios, Basically, that's some of the things the GEM shares with her sister. The 8407 Plus hand controllers are shared with the CEM40 and up, as well as accessories such as iPolar and the Wi-Fi adapters. The GEM45, if compared to the CEM40, has obviously five extra pounds of payload, of course. All right, let's look at the features from the top down. The saddle does take both Vixen and Lismondi style dovetails, but due to the design, it's either one or the other. While I think it's pretty innovative, I would prefer to see dual mounting without that mechanical changeover. In the case of the GM45, you have to flip both the locking knob blocks and the stationary block depending on the type of mounting. Very important to note here is that the screws change position when flipping, so on the stationary block when changing to Lismondi style such as the M6x20 goes to the top and the 25s then go to the side. Now, another issue I have here is that the side screws also have small springs that fit over the top of the bolts. If you're not prepared for it or not expecting it, yeah, you're pretty much going to be ready to chase springs all over your floor. Now, much like some of the CEMs, like the 40, the 70, the 120, you have a cable management panel on the deck. You get one USB 2.0 port, a powered 12 volt 3 amp port, and a guide input. One cool thing here is that you can swap the CMP from the rear of the deck towards the front of the deck, depending on whatever your needs are. The 2.0 USB input on the CMP is tied to the input panel on the back of the mount with a USB type B connector. In addition, there is the polar electronic scope connection, which goes to your computer in order to connect and monitor the iPolar. The hand controller is the 8407 Plus type, which has the heater as well as the large screen, both which are omitted on the 8409 series for the 28s and under. And of course, you have the red LED reading light on the back. The clutches are a little different than the original design, which involved a clutch and a knob adjust system, much like the original CEM60 had. Now, it's a simple on or off, which should make life a lot easier instead of trying to find that sweet spot. The head has the azimuth locking screws stored in the base when you pull it out of the case. They're different than the CEM versions in that they are smaller and they have hex heads. In fact, all the adjustments have hex head locking screws, but the mount does have a hex wrench as standard that lives in its own little place at the base. Of course, like most mounts, you also have the latitude marking system on the side. On the side is the 12 volt input for the mount, which also delivers the 12 volt to the deck. You have the on off switch and the HBX input, which is for the hand control, of course. On the opposite side, you have the iPort for connecting the GPS module and any other iOptron devices. You also have a USB 2.0 port for the computer to connect in order to have mount control. All right, let's do the list. Things I like, love the color combination. iOptron, I think you swung a good hit home run with this. Black and red is pretty snazzy, matches my ZWO and my Radian Raptor, so it looks pretty good. Eh, granted, the reds are not exactly the same. Love the dual saddle system. Low weight, of course, is always good on the back. High payload compared to the size is awesome. The 8407 Plus go-to Nova hand controller, the integrated iPolar, the limited yet immovable cable management panel is a nice thing, and of course, the fact that the locks 
are off and on, they have omitted those pesky little knob adjustments. And of course the gripes. Well, let's talk about the GPS is separate and it's not integrated into the unit. You only get one USB and one power on the deck. Uh, would like to have seen a few more of those. The knobs and the bolts are only big in Smurfette's hands, man. And then, you know what, the deck is innovative, uh, but it isn't for fast changes. It kind of sucks that you have to dismantle it in order to put it back together, which just leads to more things getting lost. And then finally, people, it is 2021. We've put a helicopter on another planet, for flip's sakes. Come on now. 3.0. Everything should be 3.0. Okay, so how did it do? Well, keep this in mind. I've had two Ioptron mounts so far. I've had a CEM60, bulletproof, best mount I have ever owned. Bulletproof. CEM25P, pretty much the same thing. Bulletproof, really good mount. It's a little lightweight. I could use something a little heavier. Had the opportunity to get a Gem45. I was looking for a CEM40. None available in the U.S. Got the opportunity for this GM45. I was a little apprehensive going back to German Equatorial just because I believe so much in, in that CEM design, that counterbalance design. It just, it makes sense. You know, when you think of the physics perspective, it makes sense. I was very apprehensive going back to a German Equatorial. But the person I was talking to was like, you have to try the GM45 by Optron. It's Ioptron. So I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I pulled the trigger, I did, I got it, and I honestly could not be any more pleased. I really could not be any more pleased. Now, the, the night I tested, I've only had the opportunity to test it one time. The night I tested it, of course, just like every other night when you have brand new equipment and you don't do a dry run through the night before, you have nothing but issues throughout the entire evening. Getting it up and running was easy. There was no issues with that. Connecting it to the computer was easy. There was no issues with that. Doing the polar alignment, there were issues with that, but that was my fault. Uh, when I started up the iPolar, I skipped a step, and so I wound up being in five, almost five arc minutes, a little over five arc minutes off on my polar alignment. Uh, again, that's me. And actually, five arc minutes is probably not all that bad, all things considered. I like to be a minute and under, uh, but I didn't get it that night. And I had a very small sucker hole in order to get some imaging done, and I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of time. You know, I already started late anyway. So... High clouds, bad seeing, yada, yada, yada. Um, polar alignment error was off, but I did run the guiding assistant. And of course, oh, 5.2 arc minutes, excuse me, 5.2 arc minutes. Ran at 689 seconds uh, for it, let everything balance down to where it was. And the result of the guiding assistant was, number one, I've never had a graph quite this good. Uh, I've gotten close, but I've never had a backlash graph that good and that's from the gem 45 interesting things here so it always recommends 1.5 to 3.5 seconds and for that evening i was doing two seconds again because of clouds polar alignment obviously was wrong uh my minmos were dead on those are actually very accurate the 0.16 and 0.25 were dead on no backlash but here's interesting it recommended to me low pass two on deck guiding which i've never had that before i usually use hysteresis or stop switch so for it going to low pass two, I got to read up about that because I'm not sure what that meant uh, or why I used it. But I said, all right, yeah, you said use it. I'm using it. And I did. I used it and it worked really, really well. So, I mean, all things considered, and here's a fuzzy graph to show you, all things considered, you can see the, the corrections that are going on here. And we're not doing a lot of seesawing back and forth. You know, we're not, we don't have a waveform kind of going on. It's, it's, there's some corrections. There's there's not a lot of over aggression. Again, this is just I left it as is stock, and there's not a lot of over aggressions on it. Uh, which I think the RA aggression is set at 70, and my deck is set at 90, which is kind of standard what I always run with. Went with the minimum settings. It performed really well, and again, seeing was absolute crap, but it performed really really well. And uh, in fact, if you you see the only big deck uh, declination movement we have here was for a dither. So yeah, it performed really well. Now I didn't get, I shot a total of 45 frames 
before the clouds came in and I mean it just got it just got stupid you can see the you know there's <laughs> shooting through clouds <laughs> around clouds it was ridiculous so I think out of what was it 44 shots I could only keep 24 of them um, but the 24 that I kept uh, were all very very good shots and of course that has a lot to do with the mount I mean optics are only going to do you so good but if the mount doesn't keep you centered uh, along with the guiding it isn't going to work very well but good round stars good clear good clarity for the limited amount of uh, subs that I got there but that's another way you can tell too if if you have a lot of fine detail and it's it's you know wavy or you know it looks like it's the blurry it's because you're moving uh, and it's not moving here so I can't wait to get back on the iris and get some more limit limited data on it it's just I gotta get some clear weather right now there's no clear weather going on in the state of Georgia so overall I, I think it I think it did very very well I think it did extremely well for the conditions that I was in and I will go back and do unguided testing and then I will then post those results for you so you can see that in case you're doing visual or if you're doing lucky imaging or planetary or anything like that. So what else? Uh, that's pretty much it. Sorry it's been a while since I got a video uploaded. I hope everybody's doing quite well and everyone's being COVID free. Thanks for watching.